If you know the GP Llama channel, you know I love change logs and firmware updates. We have both, so it's a good day today. So what I'm diving into is the firmware update to the Garmin GPS units for November 2020. What's been updated this month is on screen right here. So we have the 530, the 830, the 1030, and the 1030 Plus, with their respective version numbers listed too. This month we see a number of features released with the 1030 Plus trickle down to the other units, the 530, the 830, and the 1030. So with that, let's get into it. The summary stack is right here. So Connect IQ 3.2 update on all four units. Indoor training updates. We have simple setup, which comes from the 1030 Plus down to the 530, 830, and 1030. We have device-driven live track. There's some FTP estimation improvements and miscellaneous fixes. Jumping to the full change log of what is new, and this is identical across all four units, except the 1030 Plus. That doesn't list what the 1030 Plus already has or had upon release. There's a few trickle down things that have come to the other units. Starting off with Connect IQ 3.2 support across the board, so more functionality there for developers. Added encryption for Connect IQ widgets and data fields. Added Connect IQ data field alerts, so data fields can trigger alerts on screen if your developer has added that in. Added Bluetooth sync support for the Connect IQ app. Added Connect IQ workout information support. Now, a little thin on the ground with information about that. Not sure what that means. Maybe if you're using a third-party app or a third-party widget from something like Zert, they can do a little more with workout information. Next section, indoor training. Added a smart trainer widget that includes tax road field control. So we're seeing a little more integration there with tax that Garmin purchased a year or so ago. Fixed issues with grade, power, and resistance control for smart trainers. Fixed course points for indoor trainer rides. Added a virtual partner to the map page when following a course or activity on indoor trainer. Fixed the lap banner bug on trainer grade control page. And improved indoor trainer workout user experience. So quite a swag of updates there if you're using your head unit to control your indoor trainer this indoor season. Now onto two features that were only with the 1030 Plus. We see those now on the 1030, 830, and the 530. And that is simple setup and device-driven live track. Simple setup is as you'd expect. It simplifies the setup. If you're a previous Garmin owner, it will import your old sensors and your old ride profiles to your new unit. Now onto the live track updates, we see trickle down from the 1030 Plus to the 1030, the 830, and the 530. Now they do call this device driven live track. It doesn't really make much sense, it's device driven. I'd call it activity driven live track because you can activate that on an activity basis rather than have it system wide. If you're out for a ride, you can enable or disable live track throughout the ride at any time with a quick pull down on the menu. We'll dive into that in just a moment. You can also share the course you're on too. So if you're riding a predefined course, that course map will be shown with the live track. I thought I'd do a quick walkthrough of setting up live track if you have not done this before. So you click on settings, click on safety and tracking, then live track. And from here, you can turn live track auto start on or off. But live track auto start is not what this feature update is about. It's about leaving that off. And if you have your recipients configured, you can turn it on and off on demand during your activity. Scrolling down, you'll see the course sharing toggle box there too. And once that's configured, pulling down from the top for your controls and you can click on start live track or stop live track at any time. Now that's not the only place you can configure your live tracking setup. You can do it over in the Connect IQ mobile app. So from here, click on more, safety and tracking, live track. And from here, all your paired devices will show you the options available. So the Instinct Esports doesn't have the new update there, but the 9.45 does, it allows course sharing. The 8.30, again, supports that. You can toggle the course on or off or auto start on or off. Scrolling down, the 1030 Plus has these new features, the 530 has these features, and the 1030 hasn't had the update applied yet. I need to get to that. Okay, out on the road for a test of this new feature with the 830, we'll pull down from the top, we'll scroll across, across, and hit start live track. Do I want to start a course? I'll hit yes, and the course we'll pick is, let's do a Creswick loop today. Okay, and we'll load that. Okay, once that's loaded, I'll pull up here the live track notification that I've been sent. I'm one of my own recipients. <laughs> and we can see the live track information sent out here and it has my location and the course that I will be following. Out through, through Ballarat, past White Swan, Clarks Hill, Creswick, and back into town. Oh, we do need to switch that to metric too. It never defaults to metric. Hmm. Now what happens if you go off course and the head unit does an on head unit reroute? You can see here I'm off course. The 830 is telling me to do a U-turn and go back. 
And here's what it shows on the live track. So the live track doesn't update the updated course. It sticks to the course that's preloaded, but it still does show your exact position, which I guess is most important. You can see there I'll be on track soon. Another test I did was well out the road. I was out of cell reception and back in cell reception. So I've stopped here. I'm just gonna have a look at the track information that it's saved so far on the side of the road here and all looks pretty good to me. So working very well. Next up and one for people who love the pain, FTP improvement. So improve the reliability of the FTP auto detection if you have that enabled. Added a tone at the end of the FTP test to notify user of completion. You're probably not gonna be able to hear it anyway, but I hope it's really loud and obnoxious. I'm not going to test this one. And fixed FTP test workout preview page. With all the interesting updates out of the way, let's have a look at the less interesting updates, the fixes they've released this month. So fixed a crash when updating sensor software. Edge units are quite intelligent. They know when there's a Garmin sensor connected to the Garmin head unit. They can pull down firmware and then update the firmware for you. Uh, good to see they've updated any crashes or issues with that. Fix an issue with the smart eat and drink prompt alerts. Not my cup of tea, so to speak. I disabled those anyway. Fixed segment completion bugs. Fixed a bug in intensity factor calculation. Always good. Fixed retaining light network disable over a power cycle. So I guess if you have ant plus connected lights, you set them to disable, that will then save that on power cycle. Added instructions for pairing a radar in the radar sensor search menu. I did some diving on this one. I really wanted to see what changed. All that changed was when you search for a radar, instead of the word searching, it now says put your radar in pairing mode. Now that's probably a good reminder because radars, to put them in pairing mode, you have to press and hold the power button for two seconds. Always catches a few people out trying to pair radars and fix other minor UI bugs and crashes. During the beta test phase of the updates we've seen today, I did see a function for Varia radars that popped in, got refined and then popped out. It didn't appear on the updates this month. And what that was, was the Varia radar all clear tone. So if a vehicle has passed and it detected nothing behind you, it gave you a separate audible beep that you knew was all clear and you could relax a little bit. So that was there, now it's gone. However, within the app, that all clear tone is still there. So if you have your mobile app connected to your newer Varia radar, you'll get that all clear tone and you can relax. I expect to see that back in the head units, maybe next month. Now my timing on this video is a little later than normal. It's been a week since these updates have been rolled out to 100%. So it's highly likely you've turned on your Garmin and already done this update. If this update hasn't come through and your version numbers don't match what you see here on screen, grab a USB cable, load Garmin Express and do that manual sync. It's always a good thing to do anyway. A number of updates will only come through over the cable, maps being one of them. So there it is, my look at the firmware updates from Garmin for their Edge units for November 2020. And it's good to see some of the flagship features of the 1030 Plus come down to the 1030, 830 and 530 units. That device driven live track, I think is the feature of the month. As always, thanks for watching this one. Remember to hit subscribe to support this channel and to take that support even further, hit that membership button. It's much appreciated.